little free Qigong class today to start off the unofficial start of spring. It's almost in bulk. It's almost uh, candle mass, like the first, first start of spring. And so let's get uh, winter Qigong done before we lose all the winter. So uh, the weather out here is participating. It's supposed to snow tomorrow at my house, at least for a minute. So um, I can really do some good old winter Qigong tomorrow and uh, we shall see. So seasonal Qigong. Um, oh, what's the logistics? The logistics are we're going to do probably, I was going to say 15 minutes of theory, but I know myself. So probably 20 minutes of just theoretical discussion. Um, and then we'll do another 20 odd minutes of practice. And thus here in those here in person, we'll go outside to do that and be and get some sun and listen to some creek, creek noises and stuff. And you guys online will also go outside with us uh, through the magic of television. So that said, let's get it started. Let me read these chats too. Yeah, Imbol journaling event. Ooh, that sounds delicious. Okay, cool, cool. So seasonal Qigong. Uh, one of the things you'll find out if you become an intermediate Qigong practitioner is um, they don't tell this to the beginners because beginners, you want them to do something three times a week, please, three weeks out of the month, just do something, right? Um, because if you do three times a week, 10 minutes a day, three times a month, it changes your whole life. Like um, I recently have a meditation student from my group at the church um, that I taught them this principle because one of my principles in teaching meditation, I'm not like a meditation master. I don't, I don't know if that's clear to any of you yet, but Hank, stick around, you'll find out. I am not yet a meditation master. Um, but one of my personal goals is to help dispel some of the myths that bring obstacles to people's meditation practice, such as you have to be able to sit cross-legged to meditate. Eh, canceled. Apply all the cancel culture to that myth. Um, also, the point of meditation is to stop all of your thoughts. And until you can stop all of your thoughts, you haven't meditated. Eh canceled don't do that and then like you have to be able to do it for an hour or like oh I, I took transcendental meditation they said i had to do 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes of the evening and not miss a day eh. i mean it's great if you can do that but it's not required to get benefit so people have found there's lots of fun research coming out that shows like seven minutes a day great 11 minutes wendy suzuki's lab just did one where they they did this third eye concentration for 11 minutes a day and like clocked all of these amazing results so you don't need a lot and same thing with qigong the um we, we try to get beginners to do 10 minutes a day three times a week let's go it's qigong that's all you got to do but then once how do you know you're advanced because you're doing it like five times a week for 15 minutes a day Mm -hmm. you've gotten pretty advanced and then we will let you know that there's such a thing as seasonal qigong and um, what a great time to mention that because my partner maria and i are going to be teaching a seasonal um, the taoist intimacy practice of, of the seasons of love right because there are different practices i don't know if y'all are on the internet with hippies like me but um, you'll see them there are some hippies who are into like, ah, if it doesn't feel like your heart is broken open and spark and fireflies are flying in and out of your butt at all times, then like you haven't found your twin flame. Like, Come give me $10,000 and I will dispel the obstacles with my initiation so that your twin flameness can reassert itself or something. And, and then the other ones are like, oh, assert yourself. I've got that. You're not in your masculine. Assert yourself. And it's like, bro. And then others will be like, no, no. Relationships are about grieving our trauma together. <laughs> if you think you're in love, you haven't found the core wound yet. And so, okay. And so, in traditional traditional Taoist practice, well, no, that's just spring and autumn. 
that's true. Like, there's a time for fireflies, you know, in and out through <laughs> where you perineum or something. And then there's a time for for mutual grieving and mourning. Like, what better place to do that than in an earned secure attachment situation that you like earned through, you know, having all those love chemicals to like solidify some of the work that you can't do in other places. Um, but the practice in each of those times is different. It's not one size fits all year long, right? Um, so you've got a summertime season, which is about like celebrating and savoring. You know, you've got a springtime season, which is like, it's the beginning. It's going to be awkward. Be, be careful. Like, watch your step. You know, you've got a winter time, which is often like in relationship practice. This is where people are like, oh, have we hit a plateau? Are we growing? You know, or you go through another breakup and then you're like, I think I want love again, but I don't want to do the same thing again. You're like in that winter, the seeds are underground, right? Um, okay, that's an advertisement. <laughs> I'm going to put a link in that chat box by the end here because the workshop's coming up on the 11th of February, 2023. <laughs> getting better at that okay so same thing with your qigong um like one of our participants said at the beginning very conveniently um if you have a broken bone your practice will change right your practice will change um i always tried to get my kung fu students like oh you busted your wrist don't stop coming to class come to class and don't do the applications just do the forms and the workout do the qigong Watch your friends, give encouragement from the sidelines. You can see stuff. You can contribute more maybe with your busted wrist than you could have, you know, doing whatever you do in class. Um, so you modify your practice according to those conditions. If you have a cold, you don't do the same Qigong practice that you do when you don't have a cold. Um, I went personally, um, I went into a Buddhist retreat and they didn't tell me because, you know, cross cultural. Uh, cross-pollination is kind of new in the spiritual world it used to be mountains like kept that from happening and if that didn't happen then valleys kept that from happening a bit um, so they didn't tell me this practice in qigong didn't really mix very well and so I came out like a little kundalini fried and the practice that I had done for three years straight seven days a week twice a day really screwed me up but after months of terrible effort and experimentation, I found that this other thing really fixed what was going on for me. And so there was a season in that practice that I was like, oh, this is not the season that the red eyed blazed up all this inner heat through doing this Tibetan thing. And now doing Qigong that brings in and fuels the fire is just going to cause more problem. But doing it, doing this like Buddhist qigong that like clears the channels and cools you down and brings down the water of heaven. Ooh, chef's kiss. <laughs> Delicious. So um, you want the basic concept. Number one today is there's seasons to this stuff, right? It, it gets to shift and change. For um, many of us also, you'll get bored if you just do the same, like, I don't know what's weird about me that I did just do the same thing for like three or five years, morning and evening, 45 minutes per session, like without fail. But you don't have to do that. <laughs> like You can like shift gears. Um, and so if you understand a bit about seasonal Qigong, uh, the concepts of it, then you have a way to kind of play, oh, what might be fun now? What might be fun then? So... Do, 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 do. Yeah, cool. Let me read to you from descriptions. From descriptions. I think chapter four is harmonizing with the four seasons. Am I right? No. Darn it. I thought it was that easy. One moment. So this is the Huang Di Ne Jing, the Yellow Emperor's classic on medicine. Oh, it's chapter two. The art of life through the four seasons or the art of harmonizing chi with the four seasons. So let's just read it. This is one of the classic uh, texts of the Taoist canon. And so it's nice to have the tradition. Okay, Guangdi said, the three months of the spring season bring about the revitalization of all things in nature. It is the time of birth. This is when heaven and earth are reborn. 
During this season, it is advisable to retire early, also arise early also, and go walking in order to absorb the fresh, invigorating energy. Since this is the season in which the universal energy begins anew and rejuvenates, one should attempt to correspond to it directly by being open and unsuppressed, both physically and emotionally. So that's what's that's a taste of things to come, right? He starts with spring, obviously. Um, and in there, as you study, each of these lines has little uh, secrets of actual practices that one could do. Um, so let's see, let me get to winter here. <laughs> During the winter months. During the winter months, all things in nature wither, hide, return home, and enter a resting period, just as lakes and rivers freeze and snow falls. This is a time when yin dominates yang. Therefore, one should refrain from overusing the yang energy. Retire early and get up with the sunrise, which is later in winter. Desires and mental activity should be kept quiet and subdued. Sexual desires especially should be contained as if keeping a happy secret. <laughs> Stay warm, avoid the cold, and keep the pores closed. Avoid sweating. The philosophy of the winter season is one of conservation and storage. Without such practice, the result will be injury to the kidney energy, which doesn't necessarily mean your actual kidney organ. Think meridians here. Uh, the kidney energy. This will cause wei jue, consisting of weakness, atrophy of muscles, and coldness in spring, manifesting as para paralysis, flaccid syndrome, arthritis, degeneration of the bones and tendons. This is because the body has lost its ability to open and move in the spring. So that part's kind of cool as well. Part of seasonal Qigong classically, as they say, if you want a good spring, do winter right. If you want a good summer, do spring right, et cetera. So they're, they're very much in this Taoist long game kind of thing that they're saying, oh yeah, this is how you accord with this season now, but we're really concerned with what the next one's going to be. So uh, just a, yes, you will see arthritis go seasonally, right, with the weather. So we have these old empirical understandings. The thing I would like to share from this today is to think about it um, as different manifestations of energy. So in traditional Taoism, they have what are called the five phases, the springtime energy, they signify as wood, which means like the energy of growing things. And it's an energy that goes up. The summertime is an energy of radiance. They call fire. And it's an energy that goes out. The um, There's also, some, in some systems, there's a late summer, which is where things come to like, come to a plateau. Um, in European traditions, we'd call that, you know, first harvest or something like that. Um, then in autumn, they characterize that as metal, which is energy is going down. And then in winter, they characterize that as the water element, which is energy is coming in, consolidating or congealing. So um, all of the detail in there is kind of very specific to Chinese medicine, right? You know, this is the, the years and years of shamanic meditative doctors looking at like, oh, if you behave like this in this season, this is what I'm seeing in my patients next season, right? Um, but for us to relate to it, you could almost think of it as the psychological effects of the change in light and the change in temperature on our bodies that most modern folks don't register. But classically, they say, if you were to accord with that, you have this real nice opportunity to be creating mind-body harmony which can be quite hard to come by these days. And so it's you could almost think of it as this bridge between um, holistic health practice for the body and a type of like inner ritual practice of making one's uh, psyche accord with the outer world. Right? Oh, the days are getting darker. And then, you know, there are effects that that much light and things have on our body, the differences in vitamin D, all this sorts of stuff. But even if it were just on the level of like, you know, this was how you set up your personal Jungian mythology, right? Of like, oh, in the winter, we make an altar like this. We worship the spark of light within the darkness or something like that. And then you would have built throughout the seasons a time to practice and emphasize all of these different energies. And many of us have found that those do somehow accord 
with uh, with what's available to us. Like if you work too hard and and you know he he says avoid sweating, which you could think of figuratively as like like this is not necessarily the time to kick the most ass of the year. Like just settle in, you know, eat the eat the canned food that you stored up all summer, and then get back to kicking butt in springtime. Um, so if we think about that energetically, according to uh, Taoist tradition, you then have this opportunity to consolidate and congeal and like they say, like form into essence within. And this is something that then carries you through all of these other seasonal manifestations of energy. So that's the energy of winter. Cool, brief, yet insightful and clarifying to your whole life. Okay, cool. Let's do one more thing, but let me adjust this light for the recording a little bit. Um, let me try it. It's worth a try. Oh, that's weird. Um, let's do this one. Do you hit the switch for this lump? Hey, yo. Mm -hmm. Okay, that off, that on. All right, close enough. <laughs> Okie doke. So, uh, this is a bit about the energies of winter. So in our Qigong practice, there are a lot of different kinds of Qigong. Again, this is, it's a little bit aimed at like intermediate, but in principles version, there's something for everybody to get, right? You could apply this to your yoga practice if you don't do Qigong per se, right? You could apply this to what you do in therapy, right? Maybe it's not the time to dig, dig, dig. Maybe it's the time to like work on like, oh, what was that self-hug mudra again? What was that? Tippy taps? Oh, tippy tap, right? Like maybe that's what happens in winter. It's all going to be a, a little bit unique and individual. But um, for Qigong purposes, there are some Qigong um, that drive energy to the surface. We would tend to do those in autumn, actually, even though the metal energy goes down, a lot of time those Qigongs are trying to counter that a little bit to keep your immune system strong before the uh, cold and flu season come on. So you have all of these like building the field and the golden shield Qigong and all of this kind of cool stuff, right? Um, in the summertime, the energy is very radiant, but often we'll, we'll play with that, like the, the Qigong of the the monkey and the five animal frolics. It has this, it's first set. You can try this if you want. Um, the We're not gonna bounce yet, but it, the monkey bounces around and its face is like, you're doing, so do that for a second with your face. It's doing all this with its face and it makes little monkey noises and it chews. And then, so that's like the first road. And then it does this thing where at the end it does a little spin and then it goes, and it like thrills himself. Whoa, I'm a monkey. Yeah. So you can try that. You wiggle from your tailbone up and you just give a little hoot. Okay, I only saw one of you hoot. Let's try. New thank you. Ready? So wiggle, wiggle. Hoot. Hey, that's fun. Isn't that fun? So this would be a time. Okay. And then just to plug the relationship workshop, right? Like this is like the equivalent is like, You've got a partner you've been hanging out with. You went through some dating. It was awkward, but you're like, I think we could make a go of this. This is becoming fun. Then people like take that for granted and they forget to throw a random dance party and just be like, you're so awesome. What are you doing in my kitchen? Dance with me, baby. You know, like, and you gotta do that, right? So this would be the equivalent of like this monkey qigong for summer is expanding the radiance. <laughs> See, it worked on my girl already. Okay. Um, but then there, so that like the first half of monkey Qigong is all on this expanding the radiance. Um, but the second half of the fire element Qigong, they do all this stuff where the monkey like washes its face. And what's it doing? It's guiding the energy down because in summertime, 
there can be this tendency to get kind of like manic and eat too much sugar and have too many beers and you know street corn or whatever and you're like oh it's a party and then that's going to wipe you out if not now then after you turn 27 um, <laughs> like it's a rude awakening bro so um so they guide down and then the monkey does this like warming of the kidneys which is great to do in the winter it's actually it's this Taoist kind of inner fire qigong but they do it in that fire element qigong because it helps to drain the excess heat out of your heart and out of your face and put it down in your body oh. so um, these are just some examples of what one might do in the winter time you want to balance two two or three things you want to be continuing to gather the autumn, you did a bunch of gathering as well as bolstering. You can almost kind of think like, oh, autumn, make sure your pantry is secure. You don't want rats in the pantry. You want to make sure, like I can see some daylight under the door. We should have blocked that up with a weather sealer in autumn, right? Um, and then you gather it like, okay, pantry secure. Let's bring in some resources, right? Winter time, you keep bringing in some of those resources, but like in ancient times, they would actually reduce their calorie output because you're not exactly sure how many resources there are in winter, right? And that may or may not apply to us, but it's sort of encoded that when our human brains see the skies get darker, we get into this kind of mode, right? There's actually some places in rural France, uh, just trivia alert, where up until not too long ago, um, some of the, the peasants, <laughs> there was there was that still like there still is at Amazon's workshop or something uh, anyway the um the peasants would they would all pack into the house together all the all the cousins and stuff and then basically they would go into like semi -hibern hibernation so that they were using very very little calories and they would mostly just sleep throughout the winter all packed like sardines into the house to share body heat and this is, this is a very human primate thing to do, right? And so it's in the psyche. So part of the Qigong is like, you gather in and you go down and you gather in and you go down. And what these masters have realized and taught us is that it's an easy pivot from that into states of deep inner quiet and meditation, right? So you're following this instinctual template and, but you're maybe doing it in a slightly different way. Like here we are, you know, even if we run out of resources, the, the sun, it, it's California over here. The sun is still shining. We could probably go out and forage for some if necessary. Um, but the template, the brain goes, oh, it's winter. Let's go in. And so you can ride that into deeper meditative uh, awareness than is ordinarily available. Um, similarly, it's not a time to be blasting this inner heat outward, but it is a time to be cultivating the inner heat inward. So we have a lot of these practices of breathing deep down into the body, driving the awareness deep down into the body, and then kindling the inner fire deep down in the body. And the notion is that if you were to do that, you know, these Taoist masters are like, yeah, just sleep 10 hours a night, right? It's, this is op you, This is not a... Tim Ferriss podcast or something about like how you can get away with oh, if you polyphasic sleep and then you take modafinil and you know this other you know drug that we got for ADHD you know then you can get away like that's it's a different class right these guys are like no dude it's winter sleep for 10 hours it's fine and then in summer when naturally sometimes you want to sleep for four you will have like built up this reserve and during winter you'll by sleeping that long polyphasically or not you started to go into these like volitionally lucid sleep states so that you can guide yourself into deeper rest than normal. So should you miss some sleep, like you have resources to fall back on that you built up in their proper season. So it's really quite fun. Okay, last thing while we're sitting here, and then we'll do some standing Qigong, is I just wanted to review for those of you who have the course Qigong for Deep Winter, um, which is available now for like, another month and a half. Um, we do we do three sets in that course. Um, we do the deer qigong from the five animal frolics. We do the um, 
Hun Yuan, the primordial Qigong, which is this really cool ancient Taoist system. Um, and then we do the seated eight brocades. And those are chosen because the deer Qigong emphasizes the quality of this water element, this consolidating, gathering, becoming alert, but still kind of quality. Um, the second one is highly tonifying. And so it has this thing of gathering resources, locking them in, transforming them into inner heat, guiding those through the circuits of the body. So good. And then the last one, the uh, the seated a brocade is, it's a Chinese Qigong whose origin is unclear, but to me, it looks just like a um, Buddhist tantric salung practice. Um, and so it's very good also for cultivating that inner fire, but for getting rid of um, what in some traditions they call the yin fire, which is like the fire of being a punk and not according with life too much, like friction. You can think of yin fire as friction. And then the sacred fire is the blissful fire that arises through like compassion within the body or something like that. So those are those three. Um, we're going to do the primordial qigong in a sec, but qigong of the deer, what I just discovered mm -hmm. through practice is that it goes through five different phases of the winter season. It's so cool. And I think this works for all the rest of the animals too, but I haven't done it for any of them except for monkey. So um, let's practice together. First one is the deer rising. And you can do this seated if you want. Feel free to hop up, you know, if you need to. But I thought we'd do these seated. So you get to make this little I love you hand. And these are your deer antlers. <laughs> and then inside, you can also imagine that you have some antlers and that the night sky is full of stars, like the Milky Way full of stars, right? And it's shining down this blue-white radiance. It can be more blue or more white, just depending on whatever you want, right? So then you inhale and your little antlers go up. Exhale half the way and they touch your head. And the other half of the way, they just come on down. And let's inhale up with the I love you hand. And this, you're focusing on the light of the stars, the Milky Way. And then as you exhale, you imagine that pouring in through your antlers like a funnel, and then down and filling your body with this cooling luminosity. Ooh, yeah. Inhale. Exhale. Like cooling luminosity is pouring down, and it just soothes and smooths, nourishes, lubricates guides you inward. I think we have one more to go. Here we go. And blue-white luminosity pours down through the body, all the way down. Just relax and be groovy for a minute. Okay, fun. What do you, how does that feel? What do you like about that one? Yeah, did you feel it? Did you feel the cooling? Yeah, there's a Led Zeppelin song about that. How about you kids at home? Did you like it? Groovy. Okay, so this one, I think, and this is from my meditation channeling, whatever. Um, this is like the late October Qigong, right? Have you noticed when the days have started, like, okay, Autumn equinox has passed, the nights are getting sooner. And then one night you look up and you're like, whoa, there's all these freaking stars. Like in the late autumn, early winter, there's this like dark starriness that's not available really at any other time of year. And so, and you feel the crisp, like the crisper it is, the clearer the sky is for some crazy reason. I don't know how that works. But so this is like, you're taking that and it's the beginning of the guiding in and it's in and down. Okay, so that's the first of your deers. Then the second of your deers is, we'll do this one seated to, yes. So you make your little deer hoof. And this is actually a classic um, Taoist mudra for gathering chi, because it's this kind of like, oh, I'm holding. Um, don't get me started on what's gonna be in my forthcoming book. <laughs> but the hands, why you see all these hand mudras and stuff and all these sacred traditions, because they have a lot of representation in your brain and your brain tends to believe what your hands are doing. Mm -hmm. So when your hands are doing this I love you thing, they're like, yeah, I got antlers. 
Who brings, the hand said so. It's got to be true. So this one, if my hand is doing this, it's very different than if my hands are doing this in my inner life. Okay, so go like this. Then take one, and this one goes out to the side, and this one's going to come in, and then it softly exhales forward. I'll turn sideways for the kids at home, too, and maybe somebody who's here. So it's just making this circle over kind of toward the opposite shoulder, and then back to the front. And you emphasize the inhale. Big inhale, and then exhale, you just, whatever. So you, oh, it's time to inhale again, yes. Okay, I don't even know what's going on right now. Okay, and then one more. Good, then you switch sides. So that hand comes out to your side now. And you're going to inhale and it's you imagine like energy from the whole universe comes in and it like feeds all the way into your bone marrow when you exhale it just stays there so inhale bone marrow you exhale it just stays there you in 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 and you stay in let's do one more and you stay in Okay, then inhale, place your hands on a cloud and exhale, float the cloud down. And just chill for a minute. Notice what you enjoy or notice about the effect of this one. Groovy. Okay, do we enjoy anything about the second one? Oh, is it too quiet? <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is good. That was my effect. Like the one, this one, I was like kind of worried about is, is everyone getting it? But afterward, it was like, oh. <laughs> so um, made the mind quiet. Yeah. I think this is a kind of a consensus on this one. And so this one's kind of more like December, like all like that, you know, mid November, all the way to the winter solstice kind of vibe. Right. Um, and that's where you would be going in, in and down, in and down, in and down. Okay, and then right about where we are now is deer exercise number three. Uh, you can stand up for this one if you want. If you want, you can stay seated and just do the hands, but this one's gonna be better if you stand up. So let's give it a try. I'll put this back in its original configuration. Okay, so for this one, you're going to go one, two, you still have your little hooves, three, this one comes to the side, and this hand and this knee come up. Mm -hmm. So obviously, the one with the broken leg can't do that one. Okay, then put it down, but you can just do the hand. So it goes one, and this would all be on your exhale if you can, two, three, and now the other hand's at your side, and you inhale. Okay, exhale, one. Two, three, I'm speeding up a bit to accommodate all of our respiratory capacity. Inhale. Let's do one more set. Here we go. One, two, three. Inhale. Okay, let's do one more set for my uh, one, two. Doesn't matter if you're getting the right hand and right foot up or the wrong or left hand and left foot up. Okay, exhale, one, two, and last time, inhale, raise a knee and a hoop. Then hands on the cloud and put them down. Okay, groovy. This one's a little more complex, but you might be able to feel. So now this one went down, this one went in, this one starts to go in, and up. So it's like a squeeze and rise, squeeze and rise. And that's kind of what life is doing right now. Right? Um, we'd say more on that, but it's only in our class. So we're not going to. Okay, we got two more. You can, let's go sit, sit, sit it again. Let's go sit it again. A little better for my camera. Okay, then we got two more. We have the deer ramming. So these are now antlers as well, but they're gonna go above your head. And the deer ramming goes like this and you 
So now we're really taking that up and we're turning into an up and out. Then you consolidate into the middle. That's your inhale. And then you exhale and you push like you're pushing with your head. You inhale, consolidate. And it's a little weird to do seated, but that's okay. Exhale, push like you're pushing with your head. And one more time, inhale. And then push and your hands are just there to make your brain believe it. I got antlers. Okay, I'm back. And then put it down. Oh. So this one, um, Greg will recognize that uh, Sifu would sometimes teach in our Kung Fu. They had Kung Fu exercise modeled after the deer, which was to make the body light. And according to tradition, the deer has the skill of routing the chi from their feet all the way up through their antlers to create this lift in the body. So this is this one is not a light body Kung Fu. It's like ramming your antlers into the other buck, but it's the same idea that you're taking this energy that you have brought in, distilled, distilled and begun to raise, and now you're raising it up. Um, so in the deep esoteric stuff, this is like taking the sexual energy and pulsing it through this like Kundalini path or this microcosmic orbit uh, pathway. Really quite fun. And this is the season that is about to happen on like tomorrow or as we get near Valentine's Day or something like that, right? We're headed toward that springtime rising. Okay, and then the last one, you can stand for this one. And this is where like winter turns into spring. See if we'll be able to catch it on camera. If not, it's in the course. I've recorded them really nicely for you guys. So what happens here is you consolidate in, you put your antlers up, and then I cross over with one foot, and then I step and I shove. Let me show these guys my feet at home. So you come in, you get your antlers, and then you cross over and you shove. One more time in, up, then step, and step. In, up, step, and step. Back to the center. Inhale, hands above the head. Exhale with a sigh. Okay, is that fun? Yeah. Cool. So this last one is, this is the um, like antler battle, right? You've got another deer and you're like, off on my hill, you know, um, and the idea is like it's about to be springtime, y'all. Deer be getting all hor horny, antlery, right? So um, it's taking that energy up and now like putting it into motion. And you're ready for the next animal, which is the tiger. Uh, so this is just a little bit about wintertime qigong. We are now going to, uh, what's it called? Take a two minute break. And then we'll do a little bit of primordial qigong uh, to finish off the day. Question? Yes. yes. Um, on that last one, the exhale is when you're over the after you Yeah. So it's an inhale time. and then exhale, step, step, step. Yeah. Good. And then is it opposite knee? Oh, that was probably on the rising one. It's same hand and knee go up at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Good fun for the warm up. All right, cool. Take a two minute break. We'll meet you outside and we shall do some primordial qigong. Yeah, do you have a question? Or were you just waving? Hi, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, everybody got their sweaters. Great. <laughs> primordial qigong. The girl I like. <laughs> okay, she'll make it. So, <laughs> first one, pulling down the heavens, you're going to inhale up. Find a tree in your fingers, exhale down. And at the end of the exhale, you come out to the sides and you push down, slightly different than other versions of this. So it's inhale, imagine the whole universe of luminosity. Exhale pours through your body and it's cleansing you down, out through the soles of your feet. And you just give all that compost to the earth. Inhale, let's do a few rounds just at your own pace. 
feel like your whole inner mechanism is being washed and cleansed. This is a gentle dispersing or purifying qigong, which is appropriate for the winter. We're not going too hardcore on the dispersing. Okay, finishing up, rest for a moment. And the second one is beginning to tonify. So you're gonna bring energy in as you inhale, like it's coming in through the third eye center and exhale, it comes down and fills up the lower dantian center. So you inhale, you gather through that third eye center, down, exhale, and fill the lower belly. So this has a double purpose or triple. It awakens that third eye center, but it also clears the head and fills the belly. So it helps to get you out of your head in case you need some assistance with that. At your own pace, a few rounds. Do two more. And one more. Good. Then you're going to do the same thing, but now you're just gathering straight into your belly center. Inhale as you reach out and exhale as you come in. You just imagine like there's a vitalizing force in the whole universe that wants you to thrive. And so you say, okay, let me help you. And it comes straight into that tummy. Inhale. This could be like warmth or light. And imagining this tummy is your center of power. And so as you do this, it's creating a center of gravity, making you solid and steady. And like old. Quaker Oats commercials or something, warms you up from the inside. Let's do one more time. Good, then the same thing from the earth. So with your breath out, you're gonna bend slightly and imagine you inhale that earth up the channels of the legs all the way to your back Fill the back as you exhale and then overflow to fill that belly center. So leaving the breath out, you reach into the earth, inhale up through the leg channels, and then exhale, fill your back and overflow to fill the belly. So it feels like this whole back and belly just fills with power, reaching into the earth. Inhale, draw it up. And exhale. Let's do two more times. Coming over while the breath is still out. Then inhale as you're really drinking up that energy from the earth. And one more time, gather. Fill the lower back, overflow to fill the belly. Then we do a little recovery breath. So you just inhale up. Exhale down. This is just said to smooth you out. Kind of hit the reset button for the next practice. The next practice is shaking the sun and moon. So you want to imagine a red chi ball of the sun in your left hand, a white chi ball of the moon in your whatever hand this is, right hand. And then you shake them and imagine they get like brighter, brighter, brighter. Whoa, it's a bright red light. White light wowzers, wowzers. Then you put them together and it makes this big old chi ball. Wow. I don't care what color it is now, it might be pink. Good. Then you're going to roll the chi ball forward. And as you do this, you try to feel like when we were little shaman witch kids as a teenager, you try to feel, oh, I feel the chi in my hands, bro. Okay, so try to feel that. But also just feel what happens in your whole body. This is meant to awaken and smooth out the chi of the whole body. Good. 
within reverse. Good, then take that ball, shrink it down. And you're just gonna put it in that lower belly center of power. And then do the recovery breath. And all the recovery. Okay, for time, let's skip right to the cool ones. Turn toward your left foot. So you're in this kind of leftward forward stance. And you're gonna do a big circle up the back and down the front. You're going backward. Nope, your legs were right. There you go, up oh. the back and down the front. And you're supposed to imagine earth rising through your body, connecting with heaven, descending through your body, connecting back to the earth. It's inhale up the back and exhale down the front. Let's do one more here. And it's the macrocosmic orbit, in case you've heard of that before. Then we reverse direction. So you inhale, earth comes up through your body, connects to sky, and exhale, down. So you are the bridge between heaven and earth, is the ancient teaching contained here. Two more. And one more. And then you turn your feet and you go the other way, inhaling up the back, exhaling down the front. You can shift your weight as much or as little as is appropriate for your body this day. So you're inhaling earth to heaven and exhaling heaven to earth. One more time. Then we switch direction. So we inhale up the front and exhale down the back. Inhale up the front and exhale down the back. Just really see if you can feel into the qualities of the earth when you're down and the sky when you come up. It's as if you're mixing these two great forces within your own human being. Okay, last time. And down. Okay, come back to equal standing. <clears throat> so for you real esoteric types, this one opens the microcosmic orbits, they call the small universe, um, and the, but it also opens the macrocosmic orbit, which is connecting the circulation in you with the great powers around you. Okay, then this next one actually opens the central channel. So let's do a couple of them. Let's not miss out on that. So you're gonna swoop down, Cross up, inhale up into the sky. And then exhale, scooping down. So again, here's earth. And they say, expand your mind into the sky. It's the exhale, inhale. And exhale. Two more. One more. Good, then you reverse and you inhale up. And this time your hands come down, they're not touching, but they're kind of in a prayer gesture, a little etheric namaskar. So you inhale and feel free to sink as much as feels fun to you.
and last time. Good, the final set of channels we work is the belt channel, the horizontal circulation of energy. So you're just gonna grind the hands in this circle. This is small winding of the belt vessel. If you relax and feel, you may have a sense that like energy is circulating around your whole body. So even though my hands are just doing this front, it's this sense that like my whole, my perception all the way around me is circulating. Then you can expand your hands way out and twist. We come back. So it's a big inhale. And exhale. One more time. Good, then you reverse. I hope you can remember which way you were circling. If not, nothing's going to fall off. So we do small winding of the belt vessel. Good, and then large winding of the belt vessel. Get a big twist if you can. Really nice for the spine. So if none of that depth psychology stuff resonates with you, you can know that twisting your spine is gonna help your inner vertebral disc. One more time. And back. Good, let's pull down heavens three times. Inhale. Exhale, soothe and smooth. Two. And three. Rest for a moment and notice. Good, then let's rub the palms. And there's a more extensive uh, self-massage treatment in the form that I recorded. But for now, just wash your face. I'm gonna make a little transition. You can comb back your hair, because you are so cool. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Try this with a knob. Yeah. <laughs> we are cool. All right. Okay, then you're not only cool, but you're wise. So let's mm, stroke that beard. Mm, yeah. I feel much wiser now. And all the way down to your tummy. And as you do so, rock side to side with your feet, and you'll get a little massage for your feet. So traditionally, they do this. They say this Qigong is so uh, potent sometimes that you could get uh, energetic stagnation if you didn't do the uh, rubby rubs at the end. So they put this little, it's actually getting rid of excess chi uh, in case you brought in too much. Okay, then rub your lower back. Like we said, this is a good old monkey one. So you could monkey around if you want and just make some heat in that lower back. Good, okay, and the last one, get your two hands over your belly. And I like to go down the left and up the right. So we make a small circle down the left, up the right. And then you start to gradually get larger and you also expand off your body and your hands can even separate. And we do about nine. And at the end of about nine, you have a circle about as big as your torso. Wow. And then you reverse. When it slowly shrinks, and you're supposed to have this feeling of like you expand it out into nature. Now you're gathering that all back into your center. Hands eventually come to rest on that area below your belly button. And just imagine that whatever resources you have gained are sort of put into storage in your body. They go to wherever is most going to benefit you. In the winter time, in Chinese medicine, they would say route that especially to your kidneys, which they believe on the energetic plane are this beautiful storage battery. But you might see this go into your bone marrow or any part of you. 
that completes our practice for today. So thank you so much for joining in. Uh, you kids online, if you want the official version, if you don't have it yet, the link will come in a little, it's just hyperlinked in a little email that comes automatically after this class. Um, and I'll put this recording in there, in the paid class, uh, in case you want to watch it again for the philosophy part or something. Um, and in the newsletter that comes out on Monday, in case you want to take that Taoist relationship workshop, that will be advertised to you officially at that time with the click of a button, wisdom can be yours. That's happening live on the 11th and archived. So I hope you have fun. And oh, um, if you want, you can, you're welcome to take this class for free. If you want to donate to me, you're welcome to do that at, what is this? PayPal.me slash temple style. And that will send me your money. So, uh, but you know, if you, if you purchase this, the, the official course, just can, don't worry about, it, don't just consider this part of your course, like a little bonus material. Uh, but when just, you say me, does that, oh, temple style. I see temple style. Yeah, no, yeah you got it. Yeah. Okie doke. Well, it's three o'clock on a Saturday. I hope you're off to do something fun. I Thanks, know. Brother. Appreciate and Bless you. Happy winter. Nice, you. <laughs> nice to see you too. Let's do this again sometime. Like, yeah, uh, fun. It's good stuff. All right, friends. Take Peace. care. <clears throat>